Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Miss Dempsey. Hoping everybody is doing well and they've all had a really good week this week. I hope that you're staying warm and it's kind of crazy that we saw some snow this week, huh? Um, I know it was for me too, but I guess we do live in Syracuse, right? So I hope everyone, like I said, is doing well. I'm back again for another little time to be creative together, shall I say. Um, I'd like to keep going with the um, the line drawings and things like that, but I'm actually um, <clears throat> going to incorporate a couple of things today. Now, obviously, we've done our line drawings, and then you've colored those in. Um, last couple of times, I've encouraged you guys to kind of create a setting or um, like a habitat for whatever it is you're drawing. I've given you just a couple of examples, and you can take it and run with it. Today I'm going to incorporate a couple of different things. A basic line drawing that we are um, continuing on with, um, a setting, if you will, or an environment in which our character is going to be in. But also I'm going to challenge you a little bit and I'm going to hope that um, in part of what we do today that you might have access or um, the, the means to get some colored pencils or crayons. Crayons will work just fine, trust me. Markers, things like that, because we are going to actually um, incorporate a little bit of color in a very specific way today. And this is just the beginning or introduction. And then next week, I'd like to continue with a couple of different um, activities and things like that. All right, so let's kind of jump right to it. Um, I have my sketchbook, so once again, you're going to need a blank piece of paper, a pencil with an eraser. I'm going to show you the example that I have, and then we're going to get into the whole drawing process, okay? And when I talk about the, the, um, the example that I have for you, I'm going to kind of focus on one area. <clears throat> Excuse me, my... Uh, throat's a little tickly right now, so I apologize. Uh, I'm going to focus in on one little area for you, and I'm going to flip there now, and I'm going to show you, okay? So there it is, right? I have my sketchbook. You're going to need a blank piece of paper. You're going to need a pencil with, a, with an eraser. We're going to break this down. We're going to sketch it out, and then I'm going to challenge you to color it. But before we get started, I want to focus your attention for a moment on this right here. All right, so we're gonna be kind of talking about this right here. It looks like a simple circle, right? But because of where I've drawn it, what I've drawn around it, all right, you can see right off the bat that it's probably supposed to be an umbrella and you would be correct, okay? But we are going to draw this kind of specifically <clears throat> and we're going to color it in a very specific way. So eventually you're going to need uh, six colors. You're going to need a red, oh, this red's right here, sorry. <laughs> red, purple, blue, green, yellow, and orange. So if you wanna hit the pause button, <clears throat> maybe you would like to gather up your pencil with your eraser and maybe those six colors, okay? Now you see that I have like a little character here um, presumably a little girl maybe, um, and she is outside on a rainy day, right? We see some dark kind of clouds and we see raindrops and we see maybe a puddle down here. How I've drawn this as far as the surrounding area of my character here, that is again the setting, right? So this little girl is outside <clears throat> in her rain gear and she's playing in the rain. She's specifically probably standing in a puddle, maybe jumping in the puddle. And over here, she's just got a little friend, a little ducky. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to draw all of these different things. This has to be colored in a specific way. The rest of what you see here, you can color any way you'd like, okay? But I wanna talk about leaving this maybe to the end and then I will show you why we have it like that. So let's get started. And we're going to flip, <clears throat> excuse me, to a blank piece of paper up and down this way, starting with my pencil. I'm going to try to hold my paper down with my, uh, my elbow um, while I hold the, the camera. And somewhere roughly in the middle of your paper. It doesn't have to be specifically the exact center, right? Don't stress about that. But somewhere generally in the middle of the paper. 
And again, I'm knowing that I'm probably going to need um, my eraser. I've got it ready, right? I'm going to draw a circle. Now I'm gonna let you in on a little hint, okay? I have a little bottle that is, is round and I can trace around the bottom of that bottle if I choose. So you can feel free to find an object that's a circle. And if you're more comfortable, you can definitely trace that circle. Okay, but I'm gonna try to draw <clears throat> some freehand circle here. So again, be patient if I can't nail it the first time. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> so um, I've got my circle, all right? Again, line drawings, all right? Now, <clears throat> how we're going to draw that umbrella, we're going to make some straight lines, but these have to be kind of drawn somewhat specifically, okay? And I'll show you what I mean by that. We're going to start at the top, and we're going to draw a straight line down all the way through the center, just like that. All right? Now we're going to draw two cross lines, and they're going to cross in the center. So there's about the middle. If it's easier to put a dot, you feel free. I just don't want you to get hung up on that dot, because if it's not, you know, exact center, I just don't worry about that, okay? So I'm going to come over here now, and I'm going to draw a line like this. And then I'm gonna come over here, kind of about the same, and I'm gonna draw it just like that. So eventually we have something that looks like this. And yes, that's gonna become the umbrella. Now that you have that drawn, let's just leave that for now. Let's not worry about this. We're gonna come back to that in a minute, and we're gonna talk about the reason we're going to do this very specifically, in a very definite way. I want you to come down here. <clears throat> Excuse me, I can't get rid of this tickle on my throat. I apologize to you. We're going to come down here, all right, and we're going to draw what kind of resembles a little bit of a triangle. With The, the difference is we're not going to put the, the top part of our triangle on, if that makes sense. So we're going to draw a definite straight line. So you can kind of jump down here a little bit. And I'm going to draw a straight line across just like this. And I'm thinking, well, I might want it a little bit over on this side. Maybe this is a little too long over here. <clears throat> Something like that. Now, normally to make a triangle, right, we'd go up to here and come down and draw in that line. But as you can kind of see, I left the top part off of that. So instead, we are going to make the slanted lines. Kind of like that. Almost looks like a Ferris wheel, right? But it isn't. So let's bear with me. Now, <clears throat> this is going to become that coat. The young girls... Um, like raincoat, right? And I don't know, they just remind me, um, when I was little, I had one that was yellow. So that's why I colored it yellow, but you can color her any colors you want. I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna follow this shape of this line, and I'm just going to draw a line up that kind of matches that. That's just, we're gonna add some dots in here to make it look like buttons on the coat, okay? All right. Now, we're going to use now this bottom line and we're going to create, we flip back, the boots on our little girl, okay? Now, here's the interesting thing about these boots, okay? We're gonna draw the lines obviously very specifically, but watch, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna stop like maybe right about there. Now, my second line, I'm going to actually draw a little bit close to this one. And I'm actually going to draw it, and I'm going to extend it just a little bit. All right, the third line, I'm going to leave a little bit of space, a little bit wider than this space right here. And I'm gonna come down, and I'm actually going to do this one kind of a little longer. Now you can already see there's like, if you connected that, that'd be a straight line, but at an angle, all right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna bring my pencil tip to this end of this middle line, and I'm gonna draw a curved line up and down like this. See like that? <clears throat> and then I'm going to bring my pencil and I'm gonna close that in with a straight line. And then this right here, um, I'm actually going to create the same type of shape here, watch, I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna stop it just a little bit. I'm not gonna bring it down even here. I'm just going to leave it like this kind of gives the impression or the illusion that she, you're looking at this girl from the side and maybe one leg on this side is further away, right? So it might seem a little bit awkward to draw it like that, but once you're all done, it kind of gives that impression. Now I'm gonna draw a straight line like over here like this. And again, that just kind of gives you the idea, right? That they have some boots on. And this might be a little bit short. You might actually kind of 
go in and extend this just a smidge further. Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. Now, the puddle that she was standing in. Real simple. This is just a bunch of wavy lines. Okay. And so what I did was I actually started it middle of this boot back here. Watch what I'm going to do. Just kind of make it look, oh, like this. And I'm going to roughly end it almost across from that one. Okay. So now it gives you the impression or the illusion that she's standing in a puddle. Again, you can color that any way you want. One of the things that I did do is I kind of gave it, um, like the feel when I colored it in, I gave the clouds not a white color, but I gave them kind of like a gray color just to kind of um, give the feeling or give the impression to the viewer that the clouds were like rain clouds or storm clouds, right? You're going to create the clouds almost exactly like you created this down here, but up here. And I kind of thinned them out a little bit. This is a little bit oval shape in general, right? Obviously there's wavy lines up here. And I mean like kind of thin them out a little bit by like doing this. Okay. I'm going to kind of come down like this. I'm going to bring this one off my page a little bit. See, I kind of made it a little bit flatter, a little bit longer. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to just leave this guy on the paper, but I'm going to kind of go like this. So it kind of gives that illusion of like a long, thin kind of storm cloud. All right, we're getting there. You're doing great. I don't know. There's a little shadow on my, sorry about that. Um, raindrops. Raindrops are much like ovals. They're a lot like circles. Uh, the difference is that an oval would be rounded kind of on both ends, right? <clears throat> A raindrop is pointed on one end and little rounded at the bottom, okay? They're really not hard, and but it's okay if yours are round, um, if they are wavy because they might not drop all in the same exact perfect shape, right? I'm just going to show you what I mean, and you can make them different sizes. All right, so I'm going to put my pencil on my paper. I'm going to come down like this, and I'm going to whoop, and then just kind of bring it up like that. <clears throat> okay, can you see that? So I'll do another one like right here and I might make this one just a little bit smaller. Okay. All right. So I'm going to flip back. I'm going to show you and then I colored them in. So therefore, um, you know, really coloring does a lot for you, right? <laughs> it really does. It brings it all together. So go ahead and fill up your page like that. Now I added a little ducky in the corner. I'm going to show you very quickly how to do it. But again, up to you. You do not have to add the little guy. You can add him and color him any way you want. Um, it's really okay. So again, you can color uh, your image. Leave this part until the last. Okay, so you've completed a line drawing, right? And I'm going to um, show you the little duck here, and then I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to explain this part right here because it's actually, it's quite interesting. It's really kind of fascinating. Maybe you already know, and if you do, that's awesome. And I'm going to do other things next week related to how we specifically color this. Okay. Meantime, let's jump down. Let's do our little ducky. I might have to use my eraser on this one quite a bit. We never know. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to just come over here to the side and make it look like the little duckies is kind of standing by the puddle. All right. So I don't have a ton of space, so I'm not going to make him terribly huge, but big enough where you can see him. I'm going to start with a small little circle. Okay. It's pretty small. Now you have to kind of draw his body very specifically if you want that general shape. You can, but again, I'm just giving you some guidelines, right? And for you to explore. Now I'm going to kind of bring my um, pencil over here, not at the bottom. I'm going to bring it over to the side a little bit and I'm going to come down and I'm going to kind of bend him around a little bit. See what I did? And I'm going to do the same over here and I'm going to, but this time I'm going to come down. I'm going to do this and up here, I'm going to come over. I'm going to go whoop. All right. And then watch what I'm going to do to his tail. I'm going to bring that up. All right, now down here, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to come up 
and I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to erase the bottom part of my, um, my circle, the line at the circle, okay? And I'm gonna kind of go in here and I'm gonna give it a little more definition and kind of tie it together, okay? So that's kind of the basis for the general shape. You can then add, again, kind of the teardrop shape, curved line like this, and then you're gonna kind of close it in so it almost looks like a teardrop on its side, right? Or, you know, raindrop on its side, like this. All right, I'm gonna come up here. Now I'm gonna kind of give it, I'm gonna kind of make it like he's looking up. So I'm gonna kind of bring my line up like this. I'm gonna give him a little curve at the end, but then I'm gonna bring it down, but I'm gonna bring it down like that, okay? Now, you can erase that line if you so choose, but then I'm gonna, gonna give him in the little eyeball right there, and then to his feet now, you ready? <clears throat> Two little lines that touch the bottom of his like belly, if you will. And I'm just gonna kind of come down and I'm gonna kind of give him the impression that he has web feet, okay? Now over here, I'm actually gonna start my line a little bit above this line. I'm just gonna come down about the same, about the same height. I'm gonna do the same right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back in. <clears throat> and I'm going to erase it. That way it looks like maybe that duck is looking up at that, that person. Okay, we are almost finished. I don't ever want you to think like, oh, I can't do that, like I said before, right? Don't worry about it. This is all about trying. It's about creativity. Um, it's about how you want it to look, right? Now, at this point, our drawing is actually done. You've probably added some more raindrops. I hope so, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna flip back to the example that I've colored in for you. I've chosen, like I said, gray colors for like the sky. So it kind of looks dark and, you know, a little bit gloomy out maybe. Again, kind of adding to like what the setting would be, okay? I colored in my little girl here, the, the little pond, a little ducky, not pond, but the mud puddle. Let's go back quickly and talk about this, okay? And then I will wrap it up and I will send you on your way for the weekend and meet you back here next week. But let's talk about this for a minute. So you're going to need a red, a purple, a blue, a green, a yellow, and an orange. And you have to color these in a very specific way. I started right here with my red colored pencil and I colored this in first, okay? So my red I colored first. Once you are done with the red, Go ahead and put that crayon down or pencil down, whatever you have. Skip over this one for now. So don't do anything here in this space. So you have your red, skip over this. Now grab your blue crayon or your blue, your blue pencil. Color this section blue, okay? So you have a red, then you have the blue. Put that pencil down, pick up your yellow. Skip over this section, don't put any color there, but color this section yellow. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a red, a blue, and a yellow. Those are called the primary colors. There are three primary colors, meaning those are just colors that are what they are. You find those in nature, around you, whatever, first. You can't mix any colors together to get those three colors. Those are called primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. Now I may seem like I'm gonna rush through this, but I've kept you for a little bit longer. I'm just going to do this and talk it through quickly, but come back and do another activity next week, okay? So you have red, blue, yellow, and you've skipped three. Now you might say, well, what do I do with the purple, the green, and the orange? Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. So you have those three colors that are primary. Maybe you are, are you already know this and that would be wonderful. Well, let's say for example, you took a red crayon and a blue crayon and you put them on your paper and you put the red one down and then you put blue over it. Guess what color you would make? You'd make purple. 
So I colored this section in purple because I blended the red and I blended the blue and I have purple. So the same idea is with the other two now. What if I took a red crayon and I mixed a yellow crayon with it? I would actually get orange. Perfect, so you can go ahead and color that one in orange. You probably have already figured out, right, where I'm going with this next one. If I have yellow and I have blue and I mix them together, I get green. So we said <clears throat> yellow, blue, and yellow, red, and blue are the primary colors, but now we have something called secondary colors. And the secondary colors, which means they come second, they come from blending two primary colors together. So you get a second color between yellow and red and you get orange, right? Yellow and blue, you get green. Red and blue, you get purple. So we have primary colors and then you mix up two primary colors together and you get a brand new color called a secondary color. And we know those colors um, pretty easy, right? And this kind of looks like a, a rainbow, but that's kind of the, the idea too, okay? So I'm, I took a little extra time today, explained it, because what we've done is we've now created a really cool work of art using three different types of things. When I say three different types of things, right, we did our line drawing, right, which is this right here. Then we created the setting, right? So we added some detail and we added things around it to create the impression that our little girl was playing outside in the rain in a mud puddle. Then my friends, I introduced you. And even though you know these colors, I know you know them. Um, I didn't know if perhaps you knew that there were called the primary colors and the secondary colors. I didn't know if you knew that. I know you know the color names, purple, red, blue, all of that. I just wanted to introduce that today and looking forward to doing more of this kind of thing next week, okay? And I won't be as long next time only because now this is kind of the basis for that. We, we're going to review maybe a little bit, but now you can create something like this. And this actually, this circle, it has kind of a fun name. It's called the color wheel, and we're going to be doing that a little bit more next time, okay? So thank you for your patience Thank you for watching this. Thank you for being willing to be creative. Thank you for, um, you know, just kind of hanging out with me and allowing me the chance to work and do something that I enjoy doing. I hope you do as well. I'm going to let you go because it's a little bit longer than usual. And I hope that as usual, you guys are all well, healthy, making good choices, and relaxing and having fun. So you guys have a great weekend, and I will be back soon. Bye, guys.